today, I'm going to get this Commodore 128 to do 80 column video on that TV. All right, so I've got my box here from Retro Hack Shack, and in it is the RGB to HDMI board, a nice case, some mounting screws, and a ribbon cable with one end terminated. And then I've got this piece of unobtainium, a Raspberry Pi Zero 1.1, thanks to my friend Matt. Uh, I still haven't been able to track down a Pi Zero of my own, so I'm super grateful that he was willing to part with that for me. And then. For my 65816 project, I have this DB9 connector that I can crimp to, but that seems a bit bulky. So I've grabbed here a box of connectors for the DB9 port, and off camera I have a micro SD card. I'm going to break these lines out and tin the leads so it's easier to solder them. Uh, just so you understand how I'm wiring this up, there's a video by Retro Hack Shack that has this diagram about where the wires go to the pins, and I'm going to follow that. You can follow his video with more detail. I'll link that up in the corner here. And now that I've built the connector, let's get the software installed onto the Raspberry Pi. So the quick start guide on Wiki is actually pretty straightforward and very detailed. Uh, the part we're worried about right now is installing the software, the first part of the Getting Started Guide. And it's basically just download this file from the releases. There we go, there's the zip file. Download it, put it in my HD, RGB to HDMI folder. And we'll extract it to a micro SD card. And we should be able to plug it in and just run it. I'm going to plug this in, and the first thing we should get is a startup screen. And we get 1366 by 768 auto switch, no profile matched. Interface 8 bit digital YUV TTL. Didn't ask me which one I wanted, just assumed I wanted YUV. Um, no sync detected. Oh, we gotta turn on the computer. Well, this isn't a TRS-80 Model 3, so... UK-101, nope. ZX-80, no. Apple II 2E TTL. No. Apple II C TTL? No. TRS-80 Model 3? There are not enough profiles. Uh, update. Okay. Update CPL D menu. This, this is what I was expecting to see when I turned it on. On YUV now. We don't want the BBC version because uh, we're not running the BBC Micro and that's what we're on now. Let's go to the RGB version. Current is 12-bit YUV, confirm, yes. Programming. So I guess if it doesn't give you the boot up, what you're gonna need to do is go in and set it to whichever profile is gonna work for you. For my Commodore 128, I need the RGB version, which I thought I was gonna be able to select right off the bat. Uh, it's rebooting, three, two, one, it'll restart. Um, my 128 still on. Uh, no sync detected, interface 812 digital RGB. Use auto calibrate video sampling or adjust sampling phase to fix noise. But it thinks it's a Tandy 1000, so let's go in the menu. Um, okay, ABC80. Okay, this is, this is definitely giving me new options. Uh, Acorn Atom, Acorn Electron. Much, much later. Commodore 12880. This is what I'm looking for. Sub profile 60 hertz. Because we're in TSC. This should be. Check. 
turn. Let's turn it off and on again. Let's see what happens. This video. Okay. So I can see the machine's working because my S video input does still have the 128 booting up. So we know the machine's working, we know it's outputting. Uh, I've got a suspicion I know what's wrong here. And let's head back to the bench and take a look. So one thing I skipped because I wasn't really paying attention is in the overview here, it talks about there are three different hardware implementations of RGB to HDMI. Uh, the original three bits designed for the BBC Micro, which is why we have that five volt line. The 2019 four bit for the Acorns and the new 2020 12 bit per pixel generic with optional analog front end. Um, yeah, there are 12 lines on my uh, thing. I had to ignore three of them. Um, and all these are supported by the same software. So the software isn't the issue. What I needed to do was look at the cable section. Because you can see the different pinouts here. And if I scroll down here far enough, IBM PC, MDA, CGA, EGA, blah, blah. So for the Commodore 128, I need to wire this up a little differently. Um, there are 12 pins. And I was working off the 10 pin design where this would have been pin one, but instead it's actually this that's pin one. So I need to ignore the first two pins and then do the next nine and ignore the last one again, as opposed to evolve them, ignore the last three. So quick, quick rewiring on the bench should be good to go. Fifty hertz mode, but I know this is an NTSC machine. Um, use auto calibrate video sampling, or just sampling to fix noise. I don't have any noise. I have no sync detected. Eighty column display. Okay, okay, we've got something. It's a good start. Okay, I'm going to have to dig into this a little further because obviously I'm getting signal, but my sinks are all sorts of wrong. A little later. So I've got this wired into my diagnostic portion of this instead. Uh, it's been pinned out, knows everything's connected. Sure, I'm in 80 column mode. <sighs> of course it works. Of course it works. Which just means it was my bad soldering more than anything else. Uh, for the moment, I'm going to let this just... It's going to exist like this for now. This is as far as I'm going to take this for today. Uh, this has already taken me longer than I had anticipated. And I've got it on the wrong connector, but I need to make sure it worked. I will either try to resolder that again and see if I just screw up again. Entirely possible. Or I will make a 3D ca printed case. Who knows? Maybe I'll find a nice DB9 connector thing that fits that already. I don't know. I'll figure it out. So we've hit 80 column mode, we've got it working, the RGB to HDMI is 
functioning the way I'd like it to. I don't have any other computers to test it with right now, uh, but that isn't to say I won't get others in the future. I'm hoping to pick up a Tandy 1000 and then start rebuilding a fleet of old PCs at some point. Uh, but the 80 column mode works on the 128. I'm happy. And it sets us up to, once I find a 1351 mouse out there, and I'm sure I'll find something eventually, if you've got one and you want to part with it, just let me know. We'll go full Geos on this thing and see what we can do with it. I'm really excited to do maybe some internet things with Geos on a 128. I think that'll be kind of fun. I think we have all, almost have all the pieces ready to go to do that. Uh, if you enjoy what I'm doing here, and you're having fun, uh, you can feel free to buy me a coffee. The links are down at the bottom. I don't have a Patreon, but if you sub, you like, share, buy me a coffee, I'm much happier if you do that. Works better for all of us. I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this, go ahead and press that subscribe button in the center of the screen. I've also got a couple other videos I think you might enjoy.